and some noise for How To Be A Confident Streamer. Who are Folks, it's it. The streamer is with an asterisk because my beautiful guests here today aren't necessarily all streamers. But we'll probably introduce them and we can talk about that. First up, first up is Becky Frost from Special Effect. Woo! For Becky Frost. Yeah, where did you get that picture? Uh, you told me to get one from your Instagram. Damn it. Um, yeah, I'm Becky, I'm for Special Effect. We are the Gamers Charity. Uh, we make and modify controllers and software for people with physical disabilities so they can play. Um, and yeah, I stream a bit. So I'm here to talk about how to stream, although you are maybe not the most confident person in the world. Um, so yeah, hi. <laughs> and where can we find Special Effect today, Becky? Uh, you can find us back that way. Uh, if you head to our good friends at Insert Coin, you're, you're getting close. So we're, we're out there, we're playing Untitled Goose Game. You've got a special button, haven't you? Yes, we've got a honk button for Untitled Goose Game. Um, I'm just calling it un Untitled Goose Game, it's Untitled Goose Game, but he is a very entitled goose. So, so if you want to press a big button and honk at Becky, head over there later. <laughs> Next up, we've got Jamie Knuckle. Woo! Hey, who are you? What do you do? So I am um, one of the top followers in the world, or sorry, people in the top following in the world for an app called Clutch. It's a recent uh, app, if you like, where it's kind of like Instagram, but without all the rubbish. Um, I play with Red, <laughs> some of it. I play Red Dead Online, and um, yeah, we're a bit of a pain online, but in real life, we're actually alright people, really. So yeah. Yeah, we'll be talking a bit about griefing and the issues that can bring. Um, a lot of issues. Yeah, just today, in fact. Let's not talk about that. But come on to that. Last but not least, it's Bex! From hey. Trista Bites, hi! Hey, I'm Bex Trista, uh, more often known as Trista Bites. I've been on YouTube for nearly four years, and I just started Twitch streaming fairly recently this year, so just building a following and enjoying it so far. So that's why the streaming was an asterisk, because we're all at various stages of our streaming career. Last but not least, there's me, uh, Robin Bates from Coaching for Geeks. I run a coaching consultancy that's all about life skills, confidence and gaming. Because who doesn't love gaming? It would be weird if you were here, if you didn't love gaming. And I stream twice a year for special effects. <laughs> But I'm much more comfortable in this kind of environment, so we'll talk more about how all of these skills are transferable and it's something you've got to ease yourself into. But the, the key slide, if the process is so easy, it's essentially just playing games with people watching. Why do, why do we get so nervous about it? Where's, what's the issue? Becky, um, sorry, you're going to jump in there, Jamie. But... No, no, it's fine. I was just going to scratch my nose. Because <laughs> Becky, I know that you, um, you, you have to get over your nerves to go online every time. Yeah, definitely, and it, it is every time. Like pressing that go live button is really nerve-wracking, and it feels really scary. But once you are live and you just do it, it, it's not so bad. Honest. I, I don't know what else to say from that. It just it does feel scary. You're putting yourself out there. Um, and I think the best thing to remember is that you're, you're going to be putting yourself out there, but you're putting yourself out there to people that you probably know because you've like tweeted about it maybe and said, I'm going live, come and join me. It's my first ever stream, which is definitely why I did. And it was like a load of my mates from work that came in and said, oh my God, you're streaming. Um, and then I didn't know what to do. And it's just, yeah, it, it feels really scary, but it's one of those sort of rites of passage almost that you have to just sort of take a deep breath and just do and it's it's never going to be as bad as you think I think is the, the one bit of advice I can give first time's the worst right yeah. how about you what was your what was your first time like Bex <laughs> I like the way you just look at me to, to use the really dodgy segue to the next person thank you for that I appreciate that <laughs> uh, for me twitch streaming was quite interesting um, because I'd been doing YouTube for so long and because I'd done some on stage work as well for work because uh, I'm a graphic designer first so I'd done some presenting in a business to business kind of environment and I was quite surprised how nervous I was the first time I had to hit that terrifying go live button because I thought this will be easier 
because you're just there in, in your own environment. You're playing games. I mean, I started off by just streaming, just chatting and just talking. I thought before I start worrying about trying to add all these extra things and more technology, I'd start with just talking to my audience and, and seeing how that went. And I was just amazed how scary that first time was because you can't see anyone. If you're dealing with YouTube videos, you're kind of, uh, you're doing the performance, you're editing it, you're putting it up there and you're getting those reactions at a very delayed feedback response. And then when you're doing something live on a stage, you can see the audience. If you tell a joke and it's rubbish, nobody laughs and you know to adjust and you can kind of play off of that. But because you've got just this text feedback coming and you don't necessarily know how many people are watching and you've got no idea if any of them are laughing or if they're typing LOL really sarcastically. And I found that a very, very different process. But the more times you do it, it just becomes second nature and you just learn how to adapt and how to read your audience and things like that. So yeah, I've been doing it two, three times a week now on Twitch for however many months I've lost track. And it gets less scarier each time, but there is always that element of what if the computer explodes and what if I'm not funny? What if the computer did explode? Yeah, I mean, the computer does explode and take over the world sometimes, but it's fine. <laughs> I called it Skynet for a reason. Oh, and that's why I prefer this kind of environment. You get that direct feedback. I mean, we're looking out. There are people yeah. out there, which is which is good. We've got some waves. Yeah, they um, all look pretty friendly. They don't look like they're going to instantly murder us. Well, we'll find out later. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, Jamie, your, yes. your experience is a bit different. You use uh, Clutch, which... Uh, explain to the boys and girls a bit about Clutch and how that works. Yeah, so Clutch is your, it just takes clips of your gaming and you upload it straight to Clutch. You can hashtag things, you can um, tag people in it. And it's just, a, I think it's a great way to start out if you're aiming to stream because you don't necessarily need to put any input in it to yourself apart from your gaming and a bit of writing afterwards. Uh, you can go live on there and it's connected to uh, Mixer, hence why I've, I've started streaming for Mixer as well. And it's, um, it's funny how you touched on that as well. It is very nerve-wracking, especially when you're on your own and you're, like you say, you're making a joke and no one's laughing. Like right now, everyone's just staring at you. And it's a bit nerve-wracking. Um, stop that, come on, man. <laughs> um, but the point is, I got a bit lucky because I play, um, like I said, Red Dead with a group of people. There's always at least four or five of us. So if I'm cracking jokes, they're laughing, we're laughing. And I've got a horrific laugh and it's just piercing and it's horrible. But they're cracking up, I'm cracking up. It makes me feel a lot at ease. So I would say, you know, if you're wanting to stream, definitely start on Clutch. I'm a big advocate of Clutch. They'll probably hate me for saying that, to be fair. They don't like me very much. Um, but that's a good start, because you can start streaming and definitely stream with other people. Get them in the chat, have a chat. It should really um, calm your nerves, I found anyway. So I'm a bit lucky in that respect. That's one of the things I found, because I tend to stream uh, for special effects for Game Blast weekend. Check out Game Blast, everyone. Uh, when is it, February? If, uh, if anyone's interested in Game Blast, I came prepared. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's the last weekend of February. And, yeah. Yeah, and I was playing uh, games with the community. So we were playing the Jackbox games. And that really helped calm my nerves because, one, it's a ridiculous game anyway. And everybody's getting involved. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, Jackbox allows people to play with their mobile. And it's very funny games, very silly games. But um, can we have a show of hands? Who out there is a streamer at the moment? Oh, you're on the wrong side of the room. Look, <laughs> that's the streamer. So. <laughs> uh, uh, who would like to be a streamer but isn't yet? Ah, oh, this side. This side. Then. You're, you're on the wrong side as well. We're just going to have to do run around, I think. Um, so just out of interest, I'm going to run out with the microphone. What's stopping you from streaming at the moment? Who had the hand up? Look at him run. <laughs> He's so agile. He's like a little Hi. ninja. Run, wow. Forrest. Hello, what's your name? Richard. Um, what's stopping you from streaming at the moment, uh, Richard? Confidence and uh, watching other people being griefed. I hate it. Oh, watching other people get griefed, Jamie. We're going to talk about Oops. that in a minute. Good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Coming back. Jamie, start talking about that. Like a gazelle. Look at that elegance. Beautiful, beautiful. So, Jamie, you're a Blackwater griefer, and you Correct. are essentially role play as a bandit cowboy in your spare time. Who hurt you as a child? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's one of the security guards here. There he is, him, specifically him. Genuinely picked me up and dropped me on my head. I'm not even joking. Um, 
Yeah, so this, this term griefers, obviously, um, if you're an online, uh, has anyone actually played an online game? Like genuinely, like GTA or anything online was excellent. So there's a lot of you here. So you, when you hear griefer, you think, oh, these guys, they're complete, you know, blank holes. Let's be honest. Um, and I get it, I do get it. But I genuinely believe there are three types of these uh, griefers, if you like. You've got the ones that just play the game and come at you, leave you alone. Cool, they could be griefers. Then you've got the ones that, you know, message you and say this, that, the other. I come into that category, by the way. Apologize. I really do apologize. Um, and then you get the ones that actually take into real life, which has happened recently to me, actually. So it's a bit of uh, karma, if you like. So, haha, good job, guys. Um, but there are different levels of it, and I, I do get it. But with Red Dead, for example, we felt that there wasn't much content and we sat there going, you know what, it's a Wild West game. Let's be the bad guys in the bad guy game. It's all about, you know, hunting, doing this, doing missions. Fine, cool, but let's add a little bit of danger. You know, you see Blackwater Griefers, they're like, uh-oh, you know, they're coming at us. Let's have, a, let's have a fight, let's have fun. And for many, many months, it was great fun. There was loads of people, big wars and whatnot. So I completely get what you're saying with um, Griefers and, um, I probably shouldn't announce it publicly, but I'm a fake griefer, if I'm honest. Just don't tell the online community because they exile me again. Yeah. How about you, Bex? Have you encountered um, trolls, haters, griefers in your time streaming and, and YouTubing? You must have delved into your own comment section. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people say don't read the comments. Um, I think I'm quite lucky with the things I'm doing. It's a lot more niche and I do a lot of interviewing indie game devs and indie comic creators and things like that, which aren't really the, the sort of videos those people are looking for. So I think that helps a little bit to be working in your own niche. Whereas if you're going after something that's a really big topic, like if I just made a million videos on Star Wars and claim to have any opinion about anything to do with anything ever about Star Wars, that's just, people are gonna hook into that a lot easier. So I have escaped a reasonable amount of it just partly based on the type of content I'm creating. But overall, I tend to just stick with the advice of do not feed the trolls. Um, and if people are reasonably just, they're actually just doing something to get a response, a negative response, the only thing you can do is just ignore it and shut it down. Um, remove it if it's designed to be offensive to the other people watching. Um, and, on, and on Twitch, that just means having someone who's a friend who's a mod who will just come along and spot. And it's usually very, very easy to, to spot these people. Um, and when you're smaller, they don't really tend to to target you and um, by the time you get to the point where it really is a massive issue you probably have enough people that have your back that are modding your community that are gonna look out for you um, but yeah it's, it's just a slow process really and that's really key is setting up your auto mods setting up your your, your real world mods uh, buddying up with other people who are streaming and yeah. having each other's backs grow, growing and building your community uh, to look out for you and each other meanwhile Becky, as as you're in the charity world, do you do you do you escape from this? Do they come for you at all? Um, I I've got to admit I have been quite lucky on on that front. Uh, people who tend to know special effects, we're we're very open and, and honest about what we do as a charity. So there hasn't been a lot of that, which we're very grateful for. Um, and our supporters are, are by and large super awesome. So yeah, um, I I myself almost exclusively play Animal Crossing and like indie games like that, so there's not that kind of built-in culture with Don't the game. Don't look at me when you say I that. Know, I I mean. um, but yeah, I'll echo what Trista says in that auto mod is definitely your friend. If you've got some friends who are, um, who are you know, au fait with, with Twitch, uh, definitely mods. Uh, mods make Twitch run well, basically. <laughs> so yeah, auto mod, actual friends who are mods, and, and yeah, buddy up. Yeah, the, the, the more you do it, the, the, the easier it's going to get to deal with those things. So um, I, I think we're all saying you, Richard, should, should start streaming. Right, that's one problem solved. Who's next? <laughs> <laughs> Who else wanted to stream? Do your gazelle thing again. Go I'm, I'm going to gazelle. Let's get a hand. Who's got a question? Well, what, the back. Go on, make him run all the way to the back. All the way to the back. Is that you? Cartwheels, backflips, all the way. What's your name and where you're from? My name's Chris, and I'm from Bristol. And what's your question about streaming, Chris? So, I know literally nothing about streaming, but I'd like to get involved. So, from the techie point of view, what would I need to get involved in streaming? Great question. Start while I gazelle back, please. I feel we need some beautiful I, music. I could hear it. <laughs> Look at that, beautiful. Showed off some camera. Uh, 
we've uh, not streaming at all at the moment. Uh, doesn't know where to begin in terms of tech. Where do you begin with your kit? I know, Becky, you, you do it pretty cheap and cheerful. I, I stream on a shoestring. Um, so I, I started out with Slobs, um, which is Streamlabs OBS, um, which is probably one of the easiest. If I can do it, anyone can. <laughs> um, I, I look on YouTube for you know tutorials and how to do stuff if I get stuck. Um, there's always someone out there to ask advice um, of as well. Like uh, if you go to Twitter, M Streams of Fremily, she's got an amazing thread of advice for new streamers. It's brilliant. Um, I've relied on that so many times. Um, and yeah, I I mean, webcam and slobs and you're away basically from a very basic point of view, and then you can add add to it with you know decent cameras, uh, stream decks, that kind of thing. But you don't need all that stuff to get started. I've just got like a desk lamp facing the wall, like bouncing back light from the white wall and like tin cans just around the room. Like, yeah, it's, you, you can do it on a budget. It's. I do it with just my PS4. You can see my kitchen behind me. It's yeah. so low tech with um, Apple headphones in, uh, play the game. You can see my face and I've got my team from Coaching for Geeks responding to the questions, going, Oi, Robin, answer this question. Uh, but you, your setup is a little bit fancier. We can see, ooh, nice camera. Yeah, I kind of, I tend to approach things in a sort of go, go big or go home kind of way. And it's sort of like someone in January that says, I'm going to go to the gym. And they buy all of the kits, and then they realize they're not actually going to go to the gym. And this is all just a waste of money, and they've just basically bought some nice exercise things they then hang their, their washing on, and none of it gets used. So I kind of went down this road of, I need everything, and I bought quite a lot of stuff. And actually, when I look at it now, um, and especially like the last couple of weeks, I haven't been home, and I've been streaming from my laptop with my, um, my mic, and I use a mic uh, which is called a Zoom H1, which I use on my computer for streaming. But I also bring it out to events like this to film the audio for videos. So I thought, OK, this mic does both. And I've got a webcam and my, my regular camera and the laptop. And for doing the just chatting or doing um, some of the retro games, that's actually all I need. And then I look at all the stuff I have at home and sort of go, ah, I'm actually managing to do this on a third of the kit I bought. So I would say start with the absolute minimum amount of things. Um, see if you can get or borrow a webcam of someone. See if you can get a reasonably decent mic you could also use for something else or share with someone else and just see if the kit you've got will work. And from that point on, I just, you know, just try and improve something every week or every month. And that was one of the things I did with, with my stream was every single week I added one more thing, something nicer on the overlay, um, some sound effects by getting a, a chatbot. Streamlabs do a free chatbot so people can type exclamation mark, you die, and it does the sound effect, you die, you die, you die at me, which is used every 10 minutes. Uh, and just every time you just try and add a little bit more rather than doing what I did and over-investing, I think it's probably the best advice. Overwhelm can be a real killer when you've bought all these fancy new toys and you're plugging them all in and go, oh shit, what do they all do? What does that button do? And yeah, it's like a crystal maze puzzle, the amount of wires I've got in the studio and half of the things you don't, I don't even need. Mentioned the crystal maze. If you're around tomorrow at four o'clock, <laughs> do join us on the cosplay stage where we'll be playing video games in real life. Um, but that's not what this is about. No, and I'm already traumatized just thinking about tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about your kit? Is it different because you're not doing it live? You have an opportunity to edit and upload and trim? Yeah, so with Clutch, like, it, like I said, it's literally just an app. That's all it is. You just clip and upload um, and, and away you go, really. It's a great way to start. Even with um, the mixer itself, I've linked that to my Xbox, linked that to my Clutch as well itself. Click on a button um, to go live and that goes live. Your mixer goes live. Anybody on either can start watching you, and I don't actually have a webcam, mainly because I'm poor. But I just don't have I just don't have a webcam, and I think that's okay to start off with. You're just sitting there having a good time. People tend I think people would tend to try at least focus on the game more than my face, which is great, uh, especially in the uh, industry, shall we say, that I'm in for uh, streaming. So yeah, I don't think you need anything to start off with. Definitely not. Just log in, have a go, and you can add me, and we'll stream together. <laughs> Definitely. Danger zone. <laughs> um, yeah, I just do it with my PS4. It's plug, plug and play, click a button and go. Um, but with all the time that you've spent streaming, we've all overcome that initial, I like to call it nervous excitement rather than fear. That helps 
change it into a different context and make it more like, oh, I'm going to be streaming rather than, oh, shit, I'm going to be streaming. Have you had any hilarious disasters whilst you were streaming? And how did you overcome them? I'm looking at Becky mostly. <laughs> Maybe. Um, so I, I normally stream to about 15 to 20 people max. I, I have a, a small but perfectly formed community and they're all great and I love them. Uh, the one time that I got raided, uh, I was raided by some streamers called Fremily, um, and that was about 100 people coming into my stream. It was a few more, but about 100 stayed. And it was exactly the moment that I died in game. I was playing uh, No Man's Sky, and I was like, oh, this is going really well. I haven't even died yet. Death. Uh. <laughs> so I was really focused on that. Didn't notice like 100 people coming in. <laughs> and yeah, was a bit taken aback by that. but. Um, how did you react to that when you went, oh, I'm, oh shit, I'm dead, and oh shit, there's a hundred people here. Sorry, I'll stop swearing. There's a <laughs> hundred people here. I said different words. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe uh, we're allowed one C-bomb. <laughs> after I'd finished my tirade of, of oh no, I've just died, um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a case of kind of just welcoming everybody in and interacting with chat. I think that's the main thing that stops me from watching people is when they're not interacting with their chat so it, it was getting over that oh no i've just died oh wait i'm i'm kind of welcoming all these people kind of into the stream and 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 picking it up from there but yeah it was it, it was a ridiculous ridiculous timing i i don't know if that clip's still around but yeah somebody out there is finding it right now we'll dig it out and put it on the website <laughs> how about you guys any any hilarious incidents or disasters that you've had to recover from? Um, yeah, I mean, you're always going to get things going wrong. I've had the entire computer blue screen in the middle of a stream. That was fun. So I had to frantically type into my own chat, I'm really sorry, Skynet's blue screened, at which point the entirety of chat turned into a massive discussion about how Skynet was probably now taking over the world and this was the singularity. And, and bless them, they waited five minutes while I rebooted the machine and whilst typing to them on my phone in chat and got everything working again. Um, because your community will stay with you. And quite frankly, I think mine watch me partly for the times everything goes wrong. Um, I, I've done various just chatting streams as well as gaming streams. I have dropped things, uh, including a nice Deadpool statue I dropped. Um, thankfully, I'm quite aware I'm a bit dyspraxic and I put a cushion on the floor just in case I dropped something really expensive. So <laughs> that worked quite well for me. Um, and just you just have to kind of run with it. I've, I've got on my headphones, I've got a, a volume control. I sat on the volume control at one point. The game was very quiet. I then paused the game. I was just chatting to people. And um, then somebody did a, did a follow or something. My uh, alerts are all heavy metal music with cat meows added. And uh, I'd sat on the volume control, it was at max, the headphones are at max, and I said some interesting words I shan't repeat. The expression on my face was clipped by many people. But you just, you just roll with it. Um, you, you've got 100 people or whatever laughing with you, at you, with you, at either way. They're laughing and they're being entertained. So I think as long as you just, yeah, roll with the punches, it all works out. Yeah, I, th I think that's a really good point. Like the, the bits where you do mess up and stuff goes wrong, become that kind of in-joke with your community and become a, a funny clip and it's it's never going to be like it's not the end of the world if something gets dropped or you know you die mid raid or you know it it becomes that funny sort of in-joke story that yeah. you remember we're, we're people and people are watching twitch because they want to see people they can relate to they aren't looking for perfection or they'd be watching a regular mainstream tv channel or, yeah, or netflix or something we'd watch esports if you wanted that top level pro play we're here for real people and we yeah. touched on community there uh, a couple of times and i think that's really important to acknowledge thank you to all our communities who are out there supporting us watching us getting involved um, but how do you how do you grow that community where do you start when you're right at the start and you're like oh it's just me playing games on the internet um jamie i know you've built quite a large following where did you start um so i found uh, another community to start off with um and that kind of grew you make friends and you go hey you know what if something because something it went wrong and start people start to leave and we said you know what let's create a community it was just two two or three of us to start off with 
And uh, all it was was going on to the different Facebook pages or anything else like that where other communities are part of and saying, look, this is what we're doing. Would you like to be a part of it? And people will come and go. And it got to the point where we, I think we had about 120 people on the Xbox side just in one chat on Facebook, which is ridiculous. But it was great fun. We also had the same one uh, on the um, other consoles as well. But the, um, yeah, I think the important part really is to make sure you have a mission statement. Make sure you have an objective. Make sure that you are very clear about that as well. Because, for example, if your mission statement is to, I don't know, pick flowers, for example, whereas mine is to, where, whereas mine would be to, I don't know, stamp on flowers. We we just met. We've <laughs> literally just met. <laughs> just for example, you know, um, it's not going to work, is it? We have very different mission statements. So, mission statement, goals, collect. Just be collective with it. Talk to them about it. And if you really want to really want to hone in down on it and make a community that lasts which because we're down to my community is down to about 30 members at the moment but the reason for that is we all have the same core norms and core values and that's what it comes to and that will honestly i don't think that will ever fade away um so yes build that's great but make sure you're very sure that between you guys you have the same mission statement same goal really otherwise that's when it's going to be a bit skew if and um, people start leaving and getting upset Yes, they do, don't they? And then they start emailing me, yeah, don't so they? I'm really sorry about that. There's some <laughs> salty people online that are not happy that I'm here today at all. Oh. So, hi, guys. Hi, he's still here. Uh, <laughs> but your, your mission statement is very different to um, the Blackwater <laughs> Griefers, and that's enabled you to build... A, spe people love special effect. Everyone loves special effect. I mean, we've seen eSports teams as proud to support your logo. Has that made things easier to grow your following? Or, or is it just because you're so awesome and everyone loves you too? <laughs> um, well, my, like, I, I see my, my streaming as, as very much separate from like, what Special Effect does um, as a charity. I, I, kind of, I started streaming um, very much to like, learn how to do it for a lot of the new people who are coming into Game Blast. And a lot of people who are doing uh, Game Blast are like, starting streaming for the first time. Um, and I wanted to be able to help those people a bit more. Am I doing that or is that? No, okay. Um, so yeah, I, I started streaming just to, to learn a bit how to, how to do the basics. Um, and I just carried on because I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah. That... And, and they are skills that you have to learn. When you start, you're probably going to be a bit rubbish. Aren't yes. You? Um, <laughs> I, I definitely was and kind of still am. Um, I actually got some great advice from a uh, streamer in, in the US uh, called Coco the Louder. You can find her on Twitter. Um, I saw one of her videos and she just seemed like really confident in front of a camera. And that was another reason I started streaming because a lot of people come up to the special effects stand and want me to talk to camera. And the moment I see a camera, I'm like, ah, hello, this is a special effect and we do a charity. And I just, I lost it every time. So I was like, I need to work on this. Um, and I got in touch and was like, you're really eloquent in front of a camera, how do you do it? And she gave me a great piece of advice, which was to embrace mediocrity, um, <laughs> which is basically like, it's never gonna be perfect. If you go into something expecting it to be perfect, you're gonna be disappointed. And then you're gonna get frustrated and you're not gonna wanna do it again. So every time I, you know, get in front of a camera or get on a stage like this, and I'm, I'm terrified, I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> um, I just embrace the fact that, you know, if, if nobody dies, it's probably okay. Like, that's, that's all right. And right? if they do, then wow. Then, that's... yeah, you probably shouldn't do it again. Streaming's people, not people, for you. <laughs> people will be tweeting about that. Yeah. <laughs> that's gonna get you a bigger audience next time. Um, but with the coaching hat on, perfection, Really, that pursuit of perfection gets in the way of so many people in every aspect of life. No, there's no such thing as perfection, just good, good enough. Good enough is good enough. I'm looking at you, Quang. Release Mau Mau Castle. The people want it. Um, sorry. <laughs> so, gone off on a little rant there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you talk. You talk. <laughs> um. So for me, the, I started Twitch after I'd already been on YouTube, which was obviously a massive help because a lot of people very kindly were willing to, to come to my first stream, partly because they're very supportive and partly because they wanted to see everything go wrong. It was a sort of 50-50 mix, I think. But for me, it's been about not worrying too much about 
the numbers. If you start watching the numbers too much, you will become obsessed with the numbers and everything goes in sort of peaks and troughs. You will never have a point where everything just consistently goes in an upward direction. You will find that people will leave, people will come back. I, I missed two streams because I was around a friend's and his internet connection died, um, which he was very sad about because he couldn't work and his internet connection cost him a fortune. And people will unfollow, people will leave because of things that are outside of your control. And you have to try very hard to not take those numbers and things completely to heart and understand that you will, like with anything, you will hit a plateau and then suddenly more people will find you. And just to keep active and to keep doing it. And remember that the, the niche small people that make up your initial community will probably be the people that will be there for the long haul. And as long as you're enjoying yourself and as long as you're having those people coming back, you must be doing something right. People look at figures for things on YouTube and say, if you're not getting a million views, you're rubbish. If, if your Twitch stream's only got six, seven, eight, 20, 30, 100, 300, 400 people, you're not doing very well. But imagine if you were in your, your living room and that many people wanted to walk in the house and watch you play a game and spend time with you. It's a lot of people. It isn't an insignificant number just because it's typed out. So just, yeah, keep going, keep building. I would run out the back door screaming. Ah, well, yeah, you could, you could do that. <laughs> Depends if they're holding pitchforks. Not this time. But it's the same with growing any sort of audience. Um, you, you only want the people there that like your content, that want to be there. Otherwise, it's kind of a waste of time having them. So there's going to be natural ebb and flow and attrition. And people do die in real life and aren't going to come back. People do move to another country. People go to prison. These. I, I was going to say people just don't happen to watch the next game you're streaming or people have gone like on I holiday. Took, I took this to a dark place and I'm really sorry oh, for that. <laughs> <laughs> what have I done? It's, it's, got, it's got very real all of a sudden. Well, that's what we're here for. We're to tell the ladies and gentlemen. Bringing this existential dread to Twitch streaming. Yeah, 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 why not? That's what I'm here for. Then they become my clients and we fix it. No. <laughs> Cunning. But people will leave for a variety of reasons and that's fine. You don't want the people who aren't into what you're doing let them go and be into something else yeah. and, and you will evolve as well you might yeah. change slightly what you're doing for the better for your channel for the better for your own happiness in life but that might not suit all of your audience but it's the whole you can't please all the people all the time adage yeah there's people in the retro gaming world right now who are shifting their focus and we're talking about digitizer ibifo um who've shifted away from retro games into just nonsense online and their demographic has shifted massively it's brilliant nonsense but there's people who are going what are you doing this isn't retro games and that's fine as well do do what you love and you'll find your audience um but everyone's got a bit of a niche here um how do you go about finding that niche who, wants who are to you picking on sorry but who are you picking on first you seeing as you asked right <laughs> um I, I didn't mean to become a content creator at all, so I didn't set out initially with a niche in mind. I intended on making three or four YouTube videos to show the, or to learn the skills, to learn how to talk on, on microphone, to learn how to be on camera, to learn how to edit, um, simply with the idea of it being a bit of a showreel, and then I'd um, go and work on other people's YouTube channels and, and go and present things. Um, it turned out that out of a million people who say they're going to do a YouTube channel and they'd like to hire you to present, approximately 1% of them actually go on to make a YouTube channel. So nearly four years later, I'm still accidentally running a YouTube channel. Um, and because of that, I've sort of naturally fallen into some things that interest me. And coming to events and meeting everyone at the gaming events, I realized the thing that most interested me was the, the indie games and realizing how those are made. So I started doing interviews and there wasn't really a plan. I've kind of just letting it evolve naturally in the direction it, it wants to go with the opportunities that present. I think if you want to build a massive audience and you want to become a massive success at this, then having a game plan and having as specific a niche as humanly possible and being as consistent as possible is the way forward. But for me, I'm, I'm uh, four years later, and with the following I have and, and things, I'm, I'm still consider myself to be finding my direction. How, how about being a cowboy? Where, where did that come Childhood from? dream? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... You didn't um, bring the hat. <laughs> so, um, how I fell into it, really, I, I was just trying to clip 
videos to slap everywhere and go, hey, look at you, you're rubbish. I'm really bad, by the way, just to let you know. If you watch any, I'm proper bad. And it was just clipping videos going, oh, you're rubbish, no, you're rubbish. And it was a bit of back and forth. And I, I stumbled across, across their clutch. And they said, oh, it's really good for, clip, for clipping videos. I was like, okay, cool, I'll do that. And I didn't actually realize it was posting them for public view. Um, and next thing I knew, I'm, I'm, I'm on like four and a half thousand followers sitting there going, right, let me type in Red Dead. And I, there's maybe one or two people that have uh, more followers than me, but in this in the entire world. And it just, it kind of fell into it. And that's when I started streaming on Mixer, um, just for when we do jumps, if you like, and we start, you know, messing with people. And most of them we do know, most of them we do know. And um, we slowly found our niche from that, if you like. And uh, sorry guys, but we do s snipe streamers, as it were. Um, just have a laugh, and um, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of people don't like that, and I get it. But to be fair, a lot of um, streamers have actually contacted us and said, look, thank you. I was like, what do you, what do you mean, thank you? We're trying to you know, upset you. And it's like, no, you've just doubled my viewings, because it's a bit of drama, something's happened. You know, it's a, it's a bit of fun. And I was like, you know, I really appreciate that, I really do. Um, and these are the people that understand that not all online holes are um, in real life holes, if you like. Um, some are, definitely. I can be. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely can be. Um, but, hey, I'm being honest, I can be. Everyone can be, come on. Um, but the point is, yeah, find your niche and that's fine. And it could be controversial as you want it to be. Just be careful because there's a lot of people out there that will just want to take it into your real life and hurt you, to be honest. Um, be it your reputation, anything like that. Um, and that's part of the trade, if you like. So find your niche and if it's controversial, be careful. Meanwhile, in the less controversial end of the category, <laughs> um, sailing the Sea of Thieves quite a lot. Yeah, um, I, I kind of think I'm the opposite end of, this, uh, end of the spectrum to you guys, because like, I, again, started streaming just to kind of learn the ropes and, and hang out with a, a small number of people. So I'm not like uh, focusing on growing or, or like going for partner or anything like that. Um, so. I just kind of play what I feel like that day, and sometimes that's um, art. I do some painting on stream. Uh, sometimes that's crafting. Sometimes that's indie games. Most of the time, it's indie games. Uh, a lot of the times, it's Sea of Thieves. I'm I, a big Rare fangirl. Um, I'm very excited for the new Banjo that's coming out in Sea of Thieves. They're not releasing a new Banjo game. It's hilarious. Again, with the no one laughing, it's fine. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think. Uh, again, I'm going to refer to M, M Streams and her her advice uh, thread, which is just you do you. Um, if you're trying to play like the most popular game out there, if you've got no interest in, you know, the most popular game. Fortnite. If you've got no interest in Fortnite and you're trying to play Fortnite or any other popular game that you're just not interested in, that's going to show on camera. If you're like really into Untitled Goose Game and that's all you really want to play, it's going to show and people are going to be like more entertained by you playing a game that you're into than trying to force yourself to do something that's cool. Um, yeah. So yeah. If you're forcing yourself into doing something that's effectively a gimmick, like playing a game you don't actually like or doing some kind of bit and you're not actually enjoying that, you can't maintain it and any following you build by doing that will eventually drop off when you want to move away and do what you want to do. So it's probably better to just start doing with what you enjoy to start with, really. Why would you want to start something where you're not interested in it? You know, and like you said, if it's a game that's popular and that's that you're in, I don't think it will work. Like you said, I don't think it will work because it, it'll show and it'll just, yeah, it'll just dwindle and you're completely changing. You're not going for that niche target anymore. Doing what everyone else does and then switching. Well, the people that are following you for that aren't going to be interested in that because you've just changed it. Well, people come in with a strategy. It's like, these are the games that are big. These are the games that will make me go big. And we see so many people failing to get that audience or they get that initial spike and it just drops off. You've, you've, you've got to love what you do. And I think people at the end of the day, they're watching a particular streamer because it's that person. So if you're just thinking they're watching you because you're playing a particular game, you've not really got the right mindset to build up a following for, for you as a presenter, as a performer, as an entertainer. Um, and people are watching for, for the person in sometimes more than the game itself. Right, we've got less than 10 minutes left. So have we got any more questions from the audience so I can gazelle out? Raise your hand if you'd like to watch this man run like a gazelle towards you. Go, oh, what the You back. know you want to, right at the back, I'm go going. on. Someone's got their Beautiful. hand raised, are they Backflip. interested? Just Summer so you know. Yeah. Cartwheel, <laughs> triple toe loop, perfect landing. Hello, what's your name? Uh, Lee. 
Um, I currently stream on Mixer. I uh, just wanted to know what your advice would be to take my stream to the next level. Uh, what level is it at now? Uh, currently just under a thousand followers. Right, we'll be back. You can tell me because I ain't got that many followers on Mixer. <laughs> Beautiful. Right, so how do you go about growing your audience when you've maybe hit a plateau, taking it to the next level um, from where you're at? Are you looking right. at me again? Yeah, I'm looking at you. I just thought you were being suspicious. Okay. Always. <laughs> there, there will be certain points where you are just on a plateau and it isn't, there isn't anything you can necessarily do. You're, you're just at that point where you've got a very comfortable audience, they're very happy with you, and you can't necessarily force your audience to, to grow at any consistent rate. I think with things like Twitch and Mixer, there's, uh, to a certain element, there's just being part of the community, there's raiding other people, there's being part of other people's streams. Obviously not going into other people's streams and just announcing you're a streamer and putting your link up or anything, but just being active in the community so that people do share the love. And one of the things that's brilliant about things like Twitch and Mixer is that people do share their, their followers. There isn't this kind of thing of, these, these are my followers, I don't want them to watch your stuff. It's, there, there are, you know, raids are there for a reason and people utilize them. So if you are sharing your followers with other people, you're promoting other people, you'll make friends and those people will reciprocate in time. Um, other than that, I'd say be very active on the social media that your target audience is active on. So for me, um, Twitter is where most people will find me um, or through my YouTube, so putting clips up on YouTube and things like that. More searchable mediums um, because sometimes it's quite hard to find new people to watch on the streaming services themselves. Just out of interest, how many of you are here because you saw it on Twitter? Like, what, one? <laughs> well, that would be tomorrow. We advertised the bejesus out of this. Um, but, uh, yeah, my... Um, f for chat with people, I'm on Twitter. That's what kind of where I find the new people. And I have a Facebook group where people get to know me a bit better and know more about the events that are going on. And I think it's important to find the right social media platform where your people are uh, so knowing what your audience are who they are what they like and and what platforms they're on and, and sharing that with them and getting involved with them run competitions and um, share their stuff uh, build up that relationship with them so that it does grow have you tried charity streams <laughs> I, I hear um, there's a little event called Game Blast. <laughs> uh, a lot of a lot of the people that come to us through <laughs> through Game Blast um, have again. like just started, or they're they're looking for like an extra push for their viewers. And you know, it's it's kind of a two way street for us. I, I really love seeing uh, a streamer, you know, go live and, and start doing a, a fundraiser, and and other people who are fundraising raid them. And it's there's this lovely community that are like building people up for that so I, I I do like seeing people who are streaming like for special effect actually get a boost in numbers and a boost in viewers we love to see that so um, yeah I, I and of course there are loads of other charities out there <laughs> other charities are available um, doing amazing stuff with with streaming and, and all that so yeah it's it's definitely one to look at because I think it, it gives you a sort of reason to maybe push your stream a little bit harder on like social media and um, and advertising it than you normally would do. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd give that a go. Uh, come if anyone's interested in Game Blast. By the way, I've got a load of business cards, so do come see me. See me after the show. Huh. Uh, we'll have a chat. But... Cool. Anything to add, Jamie? Yeah. So, like I said, I'm based based on Clutch really, and I've just started on Mix in the last few months. And um, I think. It's going to be generic in terms of building your audience no matter where you are, even with such a specific, uh, very niche app itself. And the thing that sort of clutched it, if you like, to that, brought it to that next level for me anyway, was exactly what you said. It's community. It was just sharing other people's videos, commenting on it, liking it, you know, hey, great, you know, great video, great stream, let me share it, let me help you out. And then all these people are, hey, you know what, this guy's decent, he's not a terrible person, let's do the same for you. And it just kind of snowballs from there, really. So I would definitely say get in, get in with your crowd, not just any crowd. Um, find your niche, find your USB if you like, unique selling point. Um, 
and kind of roll with those people, share it, try and join joint um, stream and, and whatnot, but definitely community, because they will boost you. Because if, I, let's say, someone else shared your video and they go, oh, hold on, this is pretty cool. I've seen it from X, Y, and Z, and now we're at A, B, and C over here, and it just starts a snowball. So if you help them out, they'll help you out. Because we're all gamers here. We all love gaming. It's about community at the end of the day. Absolutely. Well, you know, come and do a panel at a gaming convention and follow all these people up here. Subtle, I like it. Always. <laughs> I think the only thing I would add to that is also remember that no matter how small you are when you're streaming and whether your community is five people or 500 people, that somebody else is earlier on in their journey than you are. And you can always be bringing other people up. It isn't just about looking for the people that might be able to help you with your stream. Um, a lot of the videos I do are with indie game developers whose games are still in alpha or beta. Um, they've never released a game before, but I see something incredible in what they're doing. And even though my following isn't enormous and I might only get five, six hundred, seven hundred, couple of thousand views on, on their game, that's immense to them. And even if you've only got a small following, say if you've got five viewers and you introduce three of them to another streamer with one, you've helped them immensely. And um, just look at how you can pay it forward wherever you are at your stage in the journey. Yeah, a lot of developers now are looking for the smaller niche streamers. Um, when Two Point Hospital was coming out, they deliberately targeted um, much smaller streamers who were just really into it. They looked for people who were uh, like analyzing the images that they were releasing and looking at, oh, there's a reflection in that light, or we can see a doctor. And they really went for those much more small, much more niche, much more engaged streamers. Um, so yeah. Um, we think we've got time for one more question. Have we got one more? Who wants to make the man run? Any more questions? We've got one over here. Yes, I'm coming. Hello, what's your name? Uh, Kirsty. And what's your question? Um, how do you handle people who stream snipe on your streams? Stream snipers. <laughs> Sorry, again. <laughs> um, honestly, like, no, this is, I'm a bit deadly serious here. Um, the best thing I found when, when we're having a laugh and we're stream sniping and whatnot, um, there, there are two ways really. One, engage them and say, look, what's going on? What's the problem? Why me? And that might not get a response, but it might initially. And they might say, look, you're just a random target. We're just having fun. And they might go away and then they'll come back again. Um, secondly, uh, depending on what platform you are and whatnot, um, block them. Genuinely block them. Ignore them. Do not retaliate. If I'm, you know, jumping someone online and um, I'm, you know, I'm having a bit of a laugh, you know, shooting their horse, woohoo, and they turn around and go, oh, don't shoot my horse, we're going to go do it again. Because it, all it is is just acting like kids, to be perfectly honest. Just silent treatment. That is the best way. Depending on what platform you are, there are different ways of actually blocking them. If you can get a group of people, cool. But the thing is, if you're streaming and you're getting stream sniped, make a thing of it. Genuinely, make a thing of it. I mean, I'm trying to stream and I get jumped all the time. I make a big thing about it and it's just a little twist. So take it to advantage, but definitely whatever you do, do not retaliate, do not react. That's the hard, that's the hard thing to do, the best way to deal with them. Silent treatment. I say them, us. Silent treatment. <laughs> yeah, kill them with kindness, block them, walk away. Um, it, it's a different sphere, but when I first ran my Facebook ads, we got some scathing comments on them because we did a very cutesy Pokemon thing. It was brilliant. I'll show it to you later. Um, but people were like, oh, F this effing advert. How dare you use poke Pokemon in this manner? We're like, oh, what, how would you like me to use Pokemon? We're really big fans of Pokemon. What, what, thank you for your feedback. But, you know, just to ask, for, ask them, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? And can we be friends? And they'll soon walk away. I think we're pretty much out of time. Are we out of time? Yeah, pretty much out of time. So what have we learned today? We've learned that um, you're a terrible person. Uh, it's role playing. This is... <laughs> We've learned that um, you've got to use uh, the tools available to you from auto mod uh, to uh, the inbuilt blocking tools that are there to help grow your stream. We've learned a bit of um, building a community working together and being a nice person working with a charity can help you grow your stream come on help me out here guys what else have we i was learned? just thinking you went from really really dark places earlier to now let's all have a group hug i'm not quite sure how you've turned it around just in the case of sort of 50 minutes <laughs> he's a bit good isn't he he's a bit good yeah <laughs> you can see how he works <laughs> well um we've probably all got business cards and 
bits that you should take. You should definitely take a Game Blast card because that's uh, a brilliant thing. It's a lot of fun and you'll be supporting an amazing charity. Um, please follow everybody on their various platforms because that will help them out. Uh, give them a shout out on social media. Share some love. Go on, Becky, you're going to say something there. Hello. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you asked like how we could sort of summarize it. And I think for me, it's, it's definitely embracing the mediocrity and just not expecting perfection from yourself um, and not being too hard on yourself. Um, and, and what you guys were saying about not feeding the trolls and, and auto mod is definitely the best best thing for me. But I also see on your uh, on your leaflets you've got uh, claim your free 15 minutes confidence challenge, which is a uh, an EGX exclusive. So definitely grab one of these because um, coaching for geeks. I've actually been to a few talks from coaching for geeks at uh, Comic Con and previous events, and they are really good. Like I've learned stuff from the Facebook group and from from the group generally. So yeah, it's coaching for geeks, yay! Oh, thanks. Feel the love. Feel the love. Genuinely though, just give it a go. Go for it. What's the worst that could happen? What is the worst that could happen? Someone could die. <laughs> Why are you gonna bring it down? Yeah, house sorry, sorry. I'm, the, I'm the evil sorry. one, not you. No, give it a go. What's the worst that could happen? Yeah, so um, I expect you to tag me in all your forthcoming streams so that I can share them far and wide, especially you, Richard, we'll be watching. Um, we've got some freebies that you can download. We actually did them for MCM Comic Con, but it's the same company, so it's fine. Boost your YouTube confidence, how to handle haters and trolls, and cosplay confidence. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow on this stage at 2 p.m. Graham sat there, he'll be hosting Self Care for Gamers on this very stage with Johnny Chiodini and uh, Ellie Rose will be here. We'll be back at 4 p.m. tomorrow on the cosplay stage, playing video games in real life, which I'm glad to say we have got insurance for. And we'll be back on Sunday doing some other bits, but have an amazing time. Please, huge round of applause for your guests today. We've got Bex, Trista Pice, we've got Jamie Nuttall from the Blackwater Griefers, and from Special Effects, it's Becky Frost. Woo indeed. I've been Robin Bates from Coaching for Geeks. You guys have an amazing EGX and um, we'll be just here if you want to talk to us. Cheers. Take care, guys.